Section 38 of The Watergate Report, Volume 2. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Greg Giordano. Final Report of the Senate Select Committee on Presidential Campaign Activities, Volume 2. Chapter 5 Milk Fund, Part 22. 4. $350,000 to Republican Congressional Committees, alleged $200,000 pass through to FCRP. After conferring with Nunn, President Johnson, and Lilly, Marin says he decided to have C Tape make a substantial contribution to the Republican Congressional Committees and communicated his decision to Nunn and apparently Lilly. However, Lilly understood that the October 1972 contributions to the Republican Congressional Committees went instead to the President's campaign. Footnote Lilly, 14 Hearings, 6128. Lilly Affidavit, 14 Hearings, 6218 through 20. In November 1973, when Lilly testified to this effect, neither the Select Committee nor its staff had spoken to any of the other participants in the matter and had not yet obtained the documentary evidence relating to the disposition of the money by the Republican Congressional Committees and RNC, which is consistent with Lilly's account. End of footnote. Although both Marin and Nunn deny it, other evidence in the possession of the committee supports Lilly's account and indicates that the diversion of most of the milk money to FCRP was done with the tacit, if not express, approval of Marin and was contemplated from the inception of the transaction by Nunn. A. Milk Producers' Version According to its records, the committee for tape decided on October 11, 1972, ten days before the nunn Marin meeting, that no further contributions were to be made to presidential candidates, and that instead $25,000 would be contributed to each of the Republican and Democratic senatorial and congressional campaign committees for a total of $100,000. On October 17, the two Democratic contributions were made, but no action was taken on the Republican contributions until after Marin met with Nunn. Thereafter, on October 27, 1972, C-Tape made the following contributions, $150,000 and $27,500, and two separate checks to the National Republican Senatorial Committee, and $150,000 and $25,000, also in two separate checks, to the National Republican Congressional Committee, for a total of $352,500. Footnote. On October 27, C-Tape also contributed $62,500 to the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee, and $47,000 to the Democratic Senatorial Campaign Committee. End of footnote. Lilly says that, as Secretary of C-Tape, he transmitted nearly all C-Tape contributions, including the two $25,000 contributions to the Democratic Congressional Committees on October 17. Normally, he would have done so for the $150,000 checks to the Republican Committees, too. However, Lilly says that because the anticipated diversion of some or all of the additional $300,000 to the President's campaign was inconsistent with the policy adopted on October 11 by the Committee for Tape not to make any additional presidential contributions, Lilly refused to become involved in forwarding the $300,000 in contributions. Accordingly, Lilly sent only the smaller checks, 
$25,000 and $27,500 to the Republican Congressional and Senatorial Campaign Committees, while on the very same day, October 27, Marin transmitted $150,000 checks, together with his own cover letter, to the same two committees. Footnote. C. Marin exhibits 4, 5, 6, and 7. 16 hearings, 7354-65. The check to the senatorial committee was for $27,500, reflecting an additional $2,500 earmarked for a Republican senatorial candidate. Although the Marin letters were dated October 24th, the $150,000 checks and the receipts were dated October 27, the date of Lilly's transmittal letters and checks. Lilly's secretary, Annette Tomasini, said in a staff interview that it was unusual not to combine the checks to the same committee on the same day. End of footnote. Marin was unable to explain the reason for the separate transmittals. About a week after the contributions were sent, Lilly engaged in what he termed a, quote, heated discussion, end quote, about the contributions with Senator Dole, who at that time was chairman of the Republican National Committee. Lilly says the senator called him and indicated that he was very upset that the money was of no use to Republican senators because it had come in too late to be of any use in their campaigns. Although it was not expressly stated, Lilly believes Dole, quote, had some inkling in his mind that the money might not be available for senatorial candidates, end quote. The records of the Republican committees indicate that soon after the C-tape money was received, the following transfers were made from the Congressional Committees to the RNC and to the FCRP. 1. On October 30th, the National Republican Senatorial Committee transferred $65,000 to an arm of the RNC, the Republican Campaign Committee, RCC, and on November 7th, another $55,000 to RCC for a total of $120,000. 2. On October 31, the National Republican Congressional Committee transferred $95,000 to the RCC, and on November 3rd, another $6,000 for a total of $101,000. Footnote. Odell Exhibit 1. 16 hearings, 7432. The committee records show that three checks were paid by the Congressional Committee to RCC, $95,000 on October 31, $6,000 on November 3rd, and $2,000 on November 20. However, the $2,000 transfer appears to have been unrelated to the C-tape contribution. End of footnote. On November 7, the day the four transfers were completed, a financial arm of the RNC, the Republican National Finance Committee, RNFC, transferred $100,000 to FCRP, and on November 13, the RCC transferred another $100,000 to FCRP. Thus, within that two-week period, just before and after the election, the two congressional committees received $352,500 from C-Tape, and transferred $221,000 to RNC committees, which in turn forwarded $200,000 to FCRP. Although Marin denies knowing or approving of such a scheme, he does concede that he told none that the substantial additional contributions to the Republicans could be used to help in the presidential campaign and that he made no such representation to Democratic fundraisers with respect to C-tape contributions to Democratic congressional committees in October 1972. Footnote. Marin, 16 hearings, 7300, 7303-05-7348. Although Marin and several AMPI board members met with Senator McGovern in August 1972, and the senator asked them for their help. There is no evidence of any contributions directly or indirectly by AMPI or the other dairy co-ops or their political arms 
to Senator McGovern's 1972 presidential campaign. C. Van Dyke, 16 hearings, 7007-7009-10. End of footnote. Marin says that the additional $300,000 was not part of an agreement with none, but reflected the desire by the committee for tape merely to have the contributions to Republican and to Democratic candidates at all levels equal for the 1972 calendar year. However, the prior contribution practices of the Trust and the amount of the October 1972 contributions do not support Marin's explanation. Over the years, AMPI's Trust had contributed substantially more to Democratic congressional candidates than to Republicans, and as of October 11, the Committee for Tape had apparently been content to contribute an additional $50,000 to each side of the aisle, leaving total Democratic contributions for the year approximately two and a half times as great as those to Republicans. There the matter stood until after Nunn solicited Marin, who then instructed Lilly to make additional contributions to both sides, and, apparently for the first time, authorized the added $300,000 to Republicans. Had Marin wanted only to equalize total contributions to all Republicans and all Democratic candidates for 1972, he could have accomplished this with an additional $170,000 to Republicans alone. Instead, he authorized $300,000 more for a total of $352,500 and $109,500 to the Democrats, making the Republican contributions greater than the Democratic totals for the year. Footnote. By year-end, total C-tape contributions to Republicans exceeded those to Democrats by about $20,000, even though there are perennially more Democratic incumbents, particularly influential Congressional Committee members from Southern and Farm States, seeking re-election than Republicans. End of footnote. As indicated above, Lilly says Marin told him at the time of the transaction that the money was solicited and contributed in satisfaction of the prior commitment to the President's campaign for the 1971 price support increase. Like Marin, none denies any scheme to funnel the C-tape money to the President's campaign. None asserted that the Congressional Committee transfers represented repayments of earlier loans from the RNC to the Congressional Committees discussed below. B. Prior RNC Transfers to Congressional Committees on February 16, 1972, Stans became chairman of the FCRP, and on August 20, 1972, at the time President Nixon was nominated for re-election at the Republican National Convention, he acquired the additional responsibility of chairman of the RNC. Although Stans did not make himself available for personal interview, his attorneys, in conference with the Select Committee staff, indicated that shortly after the convention, the chairman of the Republican Senatorial and Congressional Campaign Committees asked Stans for funds in view of their low reserves, and Stans agreed to make funds available to meet current needs. According to Edward Terrar, chairman of the National Congressional Committee, his committee had requested $600,000 from FCRP early in 1972, but the request was turned down at the time by Stans. Terrar says that just after the Miami Convention, he was told that an agreement had been reached with Stans, whereby the RNC was to forego its share of the proceeds of a fundraising dinner, which would be split between Congressional and the Senatorial Committees. Terrar said that Stans also made a commitment for an additional $200,000 to be transferred to the Congressional Committee, and that at the time, the commitment had been mutually agreed that if the Congressional Committee accumulated a large cash reserve toward the end of the year, $100,000 would be refunded. On September 26, 1972, Stans, as chairman of RNFC, sent a letter to the Executive Committee of the RNFC asking for authority to transfer funds to the Senate and House Campaign Committees. He stated that those committees had not achieved their 1972 goals, and that at the time, RNFC had cash on hand 
above current obligations and necessary reserves stands asked for authority for the distribution of one hundred and forty thousand dollars to the congressional campaign committee and one hundred and forty thousand dollars to the senatorial campaign committee Quote, this being slightly more than our share of the gala in miami beach End quote. he also asked for authority to distribute additional funds to those committees to the boosters club and to the crp according to their needs it should be noted that stan's letter refers to quote, contributions subsidies and distributions end quote, to the congressional committee but makes no reference to future repayment the transfers were effected in the next several weeks the rnfc issued a check for one hundred and forty thousand dollars on september twenty seventh nineteen seventy two to the republican congressional campaign committee a check for one hundred and forty thousand dollars on september twenty seventh nineteen seventy two to the republican senatorial campaign committee and a check for fifty thousand dollars on september twenty seventh nineteen seventy two to the Congressional Boosters Club. The Republican Campaign Committee, an adjunct of RNFC, issued a check for $60,000 on September 27, 1972, to the Republican Congressional Campaign Committee, and a check for $60,000 on September 27, 1972, to the Republican Senatorial Campaign Committee. The Republican National Associates Committee, an adjunct of the RNFC, issued a check for $100,000 on October 9, 1972, to the National Republican Senatorial Committee. Thus, the RNFC transferred a total of $650,000 to the House and Senate Republican Campaign Committees from September 27 to October 9, 1972. Stan's attorneys say that it was understood that there would be some repayment of these very substantial loans when the cash position of the house and senate campaign committees improved and that the transfers following the c tape contribution were viewed by stans as partial repayment of the earlier transfers terrar could not recall the circumstance of the dairy contribution or the subsequent transfers but stated that it was his belief that these later transfers constituted the one hundred thousand dollar refund on the basis of their earlier understanding according to nunn stans as chairman of both rnc and fcrp had given his approval to the congressional committees taking the rnc share of the proceeds of a republican national convention dinner in august nineteen seventy two and that the several hundred thousand dollar transaction was considered a loan to be repaid by the committees when they had sufficient funds when none learned from Marin of the intended C tape contributions and informed Stans, Stans reportedly told none quote, to contact the committees and see if they can't make some repayment on the loans that we have advanced. End quote. None thinks he then talked to the chairman of the two congressional committees and obtained their approval for repayment of the loans from the quote, rather unexpected end quote, milk contributions. He then instructed the employees of the two committees, Linda Clancy of the Senatorial Committee and Tarar of the Congressional Committee, to make the appropriate transfers to the RNC. Nunn likewise says he probably told Robert Odell, Executive Director of the Republican National Finance Committee, of the incoming payments, but does not remember giving him any instructions about retransfers to the FCRP. Nunn believes that such a direction would have come only from Stans, who maintains he must have authorized those transfers, but claims they were unrelated to the C tape contributions. Other officials of the Congressional and RNC committees provide a different account of the receipt of dairy money and the subsequent transfers. C. Other evidence of alleged pass through. Nunn's position that the transfers from the Congressional committees to the RNC represented loan repayments and not elements of a laundering scheme to FCRP, is not fully supported by testimony from those committee employees involved in the transfers, and by other evidence in the possession of the select committee. In addition, it seems to be inconsistent with other portions of Nunn's own testimony before the committee. 
the reports to GAO by the Republican committees involved in the transfers, the Congressional and Senatorial Committees, the RCC and the Republican National Finance Committee, reflect the transactions as transfers, and not loans or repayments, and do not show any loans between those committees at any time in 1972. Moreover, the Congressional Committee employee who transferred most of the milk money was not made aware by none or anyone else of any con connection between the transfers and any loan repayments. Linda Clancy, a Republican Senatorial Committee employee since 1969, testified that on or about October 26, 1972, none whom she has known since 1969, when none was executive director of the Senatorial Committee, called and told her that the Senatorial Committee would be receiving the $150,000 contribution and that there would be some, quote, help, end quote, for the committee from that money. Specifically, he told her to retain $30,000 and transfer the remaining $120,000 to an RNC committee in two installments, one week apart, $65,000 on October 30th and $55,000 on November 7th. Clancy says that Nunn made no reference whatsoever to any loans or repayments in connection with the transactions. Although Nunn claims he did not tell Clancy to transfer some of the milk money, he does acknowledge that he may have told her how much to keep from the milk money. Clancy says that she then called Odell, of the Republican National Finance Committee, to ask to which RNC committee she should transfer the $120,000. Clancy testified that although she did not tell Odell, who told her to issue the checks, Odell appeared to know about the transaction and instructed her to issue both checks to the RCC, which she did. The others involved in the Senatorial Committee transfer of the milk money did not quarrel with Clancy's account. Buell Barrettson, Executive Director of the Senatorial Committee, did not remember the transaction when first interviewed by the Select Committee staff. When he was told by staff members of Clancy's account, he did not contradict her, and said that he had not solicited the milk money, and that he must have received his instructions for the transfer from either Odell or Stans. Clancy added that when she informed Bairdson in October 1972 of the transaction, he replied, quote, at least we are getting $30,000. Although he does not remember speaking to Clancy or none about the transfers, Odell testified upon hearing her account that he too had no reason to dispute her testimony. Although none testified that he informed Odell of only the incoming monies from the Congressional Committees and not of the transfer to FCRP, Odell testified that both sets of transfers were probably part of one transaction. What's more, although Odell was aware of transfers from the RNC to the Congressional Committees in September 1972, shortly after the convention, he says, again in conflict with Nunn's account, that he has no knowledge that those September transfers constituted loans or that the transfers from the Congressional Committees to RCC following the C-tape contribution were connected in any way with those or any other prior transfers. No one connected with the National Republican Congressional Committee has any clear recollection of the reason for the $150,000 contribution and subsequent $101,000 transfers, despite the fact that the contribution would have been ten times larger than any other contribution received that year. Jack Calkins, executive director of the committee, said in a staff interview that Edward Terrar, then finance director of the committee, solicited the contribution, but Terrar has no recollection of soliciting it or even talking to C-tape representatives. Sally Quinn, a committee employee for over four years, said in a staff interview that when the $150,000 C-tape contribution came in, Calkins directed her to deposit the money, and Terrar instructed her to draw the checks to RCC. Terrar says that, although he is fairly certain it was not none or stands, someone must have told him what to do with respect to the checks, and as noted in the previous section, he explained that the transfer was to repay earlier transfers from the RNC. However, Quinn, who was responsible for preparing the committee's financial statements, 
says she knew of the earlier transfers from the RNC to the committee, but not of any obligations in connection with them. Nunn's explanation for these transactions is at variance with other portions of his own testimony. It should be recalled that Nunn had solicited money from Marin for Republican congressional candidates who, he told Marin, were in need of money in the last days of their campaigns. Yet, even before the money came in, he had taken steps to withdraw most of that extra $300,000, thereby denying it to the congressional candidates he said needed it. When presented with this contradiction, Nunn conceded that he did not know how the C-tape contributions benefited the congressional campaigns for which they were supposedly received. In fact, contrary to Nunn's representation, Odell testified that his committee had exceeded its fundraising budget by that time, and, in any event, money coming into the senatorial campaign as late in the campaign as the C-tape money did, that is, about one week before the election, could not be used judiciously by the various congressional candidates. Footnote. Odell, 16 Hearings, 7428-7430. None, who referred to Odell as, quote, fairly well experienced in political campaigns, end quote, especially in finance, disputed Odell's opinion. None, 17 Hearings, 7541-62. End of footnote. Neither did the RNC need the money, which, according to Stans, had accumulated a surplus of over $500,000 before the milk money was contributed. Indeed, of those Republican entities involved in these transfers, only FCRP allegedly had a projected deficit, as well as what Odell considered a, quote, judicious, end quote, use for the unexpected last-minute C-tape contributions, payment for the previously scheduled pre-election media campaign by the November group. Finally, none conceded that no transfers would have been possible without the milk producers' contributions. The milk money evidently did make it possible for the two committees to make a substantial repayment of their loans. It was truly milk money that made those repayments, because, unless those contributions had been received, they couldn't have made them. While Nunn's explanation that the transfers constituted repayments of prior loans would account for routing the money from the congressional committees to RNC, it would not account for the subsequent transfer from RNC to FCRP, or for his representations to Mayron of the financial need of Republican congressional candidates. It appears, then, that Nunn, who had shepherded the funds from the milk producers all the way to FCRP, and who was one of the top finance men in the campaign involved in all facets of campaign fundraising, must have been aware, when he spoke to Marin, of the financial condition of the various Republican entities, and had anticipated the path the final dairy $300,000 would take. Furthermore, as was the pattern in most milk producer contributions to the President's campaign, these contributions were accomplished with a minimum of public detection before the election. All of them took place either after the last pre-election reporting date or after the election itself. Footnote. As noted above, the final pre-election report was due on November 2, 1972, for transactions on or before October 26. The C-tape contributions and subsequent transfers were made thereafter. End of footnote. In all, contributions from the milk producers made available for the President's campaign totaled some $632,500. Footnote. This figure consists of the following. Comback, 1969, $100,000. Presidential Committee, 1971, $237,500. FCRP and Democrats for Nixon, 1972, $95,000. Additional C-tape fund, October 1972, $200,000. Total, $632,500. This amount does not include $95,000 to non-presidential Republican committees, which is a part of the total presented by the White House in its white paper. End of footnote. 
they began within weeks of the birth of the nixon administration in nineteen sixty nine when the milk producers were proposing large contributions to press their views for higher milk price supports there is evidence that three and a half years later at the close of the nineteen seventy two presidential campaign they were still furnishing campaign funds to satisfy a commitment dating back at least to march nineteen seventy one at the time of the controversial price support increase granted by the president end of section thirty eight recording by greg giordano newport ritchie florida end of final report of the senate select committee on presidential campaign activities volume two